turns the lights back on Love walks into my doubt When trust is all but gone Love runs into my heart And tears the finish line Love runs into my scars And heals them every time Every time hey. Thanks for being here tonight. And can we say hello to our uh, our friends on YouTube? I don't know where. Do we point somewhere? Oh, everybody, turn around and wave at that camera back there. Yeah. 
But I'm doing uh, a couple of live streams Monday night and Wednesday night, but man, it's been awesome. We've done that. As these guys were saying, we've done these kind of backyard worship barbecue tours where people would kind of stop by uh, unannounced and just walk into people's backyards and say, hey, what's going on back here? And they'd see like food and some dude playing worship music and they'd be like, uh, okay, I'll stick around for the food, but I'm not sure about the worship music. And a lot of folks would stay and we actually had a couple of guys and girls actually get saved in people's backyards because they literally walked down the street and heard uh, some music come from people's backyards. So. I don't know, kind of cool if you ask me, but that's just me. Um, I love it. So this is the end of uh, our Christmas tour, but man, what a weird Christmas has been so far, hasn't it? It's been weird. It's still good. Jesus is still here. Amen. Still in control. You guys here? You guys tired tonight? What's going on? Everybody okay? <laughs> Amen. Uh, hey, how's it sounding online? I want to make sure. Are they, are they okay? Any, any weird comments? Okay, good. Just want to make sure people are comfortable and happy. You know, those folks at home, they're like sitting in their pajamas with popcorn, and you guys are here, and it's not cold in here, but, you know, it's all good. Anybody wearing their pajamas here tonight? No? <laughs> anyway, we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus tonight. Let's just sing this together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yeah. 
minute. No, uh, you guys can take a seat. But you guys at, at home, uh, stay standing. What, what's up? More reverb? Or too much. Oh, too much. No problem. I'm here to, to accommodate. There we go. Um, yeah, thinking about uh, that song, and um, when you say, lead me, lead me, right? It always brings you back to, I just heard a devotion on this the other day, uh, the shepherds in the field, right? I was, leading, I was reading Luke, and I was writing a devotion on that, and... Uh, and th those guys were hanging out in the middle field, kind of just doing their job that night, right? And then all of a sudden, this angel just dive bombs down in the middle of the field. And the first thing the angel says is, fear not, right? Because I would have been freaked out if that happened to me. Just crazy, right? It's nuts. And um, so I was thinking about that, but I wrote a song years ago called Fear Not, a couple years ago. And it's on an album I called Faith in Gasoline. And... Uh, I wrote it because I was fascinated by the fact that in the Bible, over 365 times, it says, fear not, be not afraid, do not be afraid. There's all of this, be not afraid, commands going on from God. And I was like, man, that's a really neat devotion. Like every single day we have the ability to read a different verse that says, be not afraid, do not be afraid, fear not. And I just got a hold of that one night. And I wrote a song, and, and it's been incredible over the last, like, seven or eight months how this song has kind of, I guess, just spoken to people. Um, because fear is really getting, like, a, a front seat, isn't it, lately? Like, in the headlines, and it's such a kind of paralyzing and crippling thing. And so many people are just getting wrapped up in fear. And, you know, can I go outside? Can I not go outside? I'm so afraid. I'm just, and, and God just continues to tell us like, Fear not, fear not, I'm with you. So, this is a song uh, not taken from the shepherd's perspective, but um, now that I read that story two years later, yeah, kind of, maybe it is. It's a song called Fear Not. When there's no hope 
Services where you go in, they give you a candle, and then you kind of walk out, and everybody lights a candle, and they kind of stroll. Anybody? Everybody's been to one of these pretty amazing services. And he said it was like it was. I think it was a midnight service, and he said he got the candle, sat through the uh, sat through the whole service, and then they went around and they lit the candle on the way out, and the music just kind of stopped. And he said they just started singing a cappella uh, sound. And he said he just, you know, walked out the door. It was this beautiful kind of crisp December evening. And he 
said that was the first night that he really just felt the presence of God. He said it wasn't just the, you know, the emotions of the moment, right? You're in this beautiful setting, Sabbath night, all that stuff. He said it was just God, because he'd been seeking, he'd been playing with me for a while and just kind of looking. He said, God, just really, that was the night. So that was the night he gave his life to Jesus. And uh, he said he went home and he wrote this song called Christmas Eve that I'm going to play for you. And um, it's been an amazing song because a lot of folks, you know, around Christmas time, they get to struggle. I run, um, I run a lot of uh, live streams and I'm chatting with a ton of people all the time. And there's a lot of people that are hurting around this time of year. And because I'm, it's funny because I'm kind of like this third party impartial person. So when I get emails from folks, sometimes they are very long. <laughs> and, uh, and then they apologize at the end and say, I'm sorry, but I just needed to talk for a minute. And I always write them back and I say, hey, it's no problem, but talk to Jesus first. Like, start that conversation. And they're like, ah, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. And I'm like, no, 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 we're all not good enough. But just start that conversation with Jesus. So this is a song that uh, Frankie wrote that night. It's a song called Christmas Eve.
That's a good one. I like that song a lot. Anybody like it? Yeah? Yeah. I see you back there. <laughs> so, uh, anybody ever been on the beach before? Just two of you. You two ladies over here. Amazing. <laughs> this little girl back here. Great. Okay. I was in, um, where was it? Oh, I was in, uh, not upstate New York. I was in western New York. And I asked, the, I said that question and no one raised their hand. I was like, you poor people. The beach is amazing. It's this incredible place. Um, we had a gig for a while at the beach and uh, down in Ocean City, New Jersey. Ten years straight. It was actually an incredible gig. This is the first year we didn't do it because of obviously stuff. And um, it was this group of kids, about 120 kids, came up from Virginia, Sterling, Virginia, and they kind of stormed Ocean City and they just kind of went around and cleaned sidewalks and rebuilt houses. It was just this week-long kind of service project that they did. And me and my band, we had this incredible gig. We, uh, we woke up, led worship for them in the morning at 9 o'clock, and then we had the whole day off to hang on the beach, and then we came back and led worship for them again at 9 p.m. So I always say this. If anyone has a gig like that for me, preferably like in a really, like St. John, St. Thomas, those places, like, let's do it. Have a retreat down there. But it was awesome because we kind of had, like, we had this worship, and then we would just go off and... I remember one, one Thursday, I think it was a Thursday afternoon, I was hanging on the beach and I was watching these kids, these seven, eight, nine-year-old kids. And uh, they were just diving straight into the waves. And their dads were with them. And I think the dads were trying to teach them how to deal with the undertow. Anybody ever get stuck in the undertow before? Right? The undertow is this weird place. You're like, what do I do? And, um, and these kids were just getting hammered by the waves. Like, they were just... Pounding them and pounding them and pounding them. They're trying to jump over, and the dad's like, No, no, you gotta go under or just let the wave take you in, and then it'll pull you back out and all this stuff. And I was watching these kids getting completely tossed back and forth. And I was like, Isn't that just an amazing metaphor for life? Right? There's so many things that just pull us away from who God is trying to be in our lives. So many things that just distract us from Jesus every single day. So many things like work. Right? Family, church, uh, Netflix, right? So many things that just get in the way of our walk with God. Come on, that's a pretty good joke. You gotta laugh at that. Um, but it's true. It, it, <laughs> if it wasn't true, it wouldn't be funny, but it's, it's true. And I just sat there and I was like, you know, God, you're never ever letting us go. So I wrote the chorus that says, I'm getting caught in the undertow, getting pulled down by the waves, but you're right here, I know, and you'll never let us go. And it, 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 it reminded me of this story that my Sunday school teacher, when I was a kid, told me. And I had an incredible Sunday school teacher. Her name was Mrs. Bankston. And she was like 80 years old for like 20 years straight. She just never aged. She was incredible. And uh, she told me this story once. She said, you know, there were a bunch of Jesus' buddies were hanging out on this boat in the middle of the sea. It was late. It was foggy. And they're hanging out there, and they see what looks like a ghost walking towards them. And anybody remember the story? Anybody go to Sunday school? Yeah. And they see, like, this ghost walking towards them. And uh, Peter, I guess the wild man of the bunch, he cries out. And he says, hey, Jesus, is that you? And Jesus is like, yeah, it, it's me. If you believe it's me, come on out. So Peter stands up in the middle of the boat, puts one foot over the edge, and then puts the other one over the edge. And the other disciples are probably like, all right, man. They pushed him, and he's standing on the water. And like, if the story ended there, I'd be like, okay, miracle, amazing. But then he starts walking towards Jesus. And he is laser focused on Jesus. And then something happens, like a gust of wind or a wave or something comes along and he looks away. What happens? Six, right? And Jesus cries out, you have little faith. And I just, that story, it just, ah. It's so incredibly relevant. Even today in 2020, in December, what's today? 16th, 15th, I don't know, 13th? Even today, December 13th, 2020, that is incredibly relevant. Because if we are focused on Jesus, right? I think we're going to be closer to where we need to be. But as soon as we look away, we sink. We just sink. So this is a song about that back and forth. And uh, it's a song uh, off an album I called Faith in Gasoline. is a song called Under Two. Thank you. 
Man, we, um, my family had a, uh, had a bit of an undertone moment uh, three and a half years ago now. Dang, dang, dang. Down more? Really? like, hey, God, what is up? Like, we don't like this. We don't understand it. We don't want it to happen. We don't understand why it's happening. Anybody ever have that conversation with God? Ah, it's a hard one. See, my nephew had been struggling with a, uh, a heroin addiction for about uh, eight years and uh, got himself clean for a couple of months, came up to our house, and um, on Easter of 2017, and we hung out on Thursday night before Good Friday, and then we woke up Friday morning and he was gone. He'd accidentally overdosed in my basement and he died. And it was hard, it's been hard for me and my family. I remember sitting, uh, he was a good kid, 27 years old, uh, avid fisherman, huge heart, uh, just had a disease that he couldn't be. And I remember sitting on the, uh, the deck behind my house, um, Two days after, and uh, I, I sat with my sister and I said, "Hey, there's two things that could happen. One, we could get completely lost in grief, or we could somehow use this for God's glory." And we opted for the latter. It took us a bunch of months, but we we started this thing called the There Is Hope Movement. And what we do is we act as a conduit between folks that need help from substance abuse addictions and folks that can help. And we partnered up with uh, Teen Challenge. Anybody familiar with Teen Challenge? Incredible organization. Uh, Celebrate Recovery. And then we also just kind of really um, local recovery houses. We've we've spent some time with those guys too. And I love going and leading worship at those recovery houses because those guys they dive in. <laughs> it's awesome. And um, my sister came up with the amazing idea of these little bracelets. This is a bracelet. It just says there is hope on it. And uh, it's a simple aluminum bracelet. Uh, we have it for sale on the table in the back. And it's been incredible how these bracelets have changed and affected people's lives. Uh, we've had stories of folks literally stopping in the middle of their uh, session to call their sponsors and get out of that situation. One girl came to me and she said, hey, that bracelet you gave me, like, saved my life one night. I said, how? She said, I was about to use, and I looked down at my wrist, said there is hope right there and I put the needle down and uh, called my sponsor and I was able to get out of that situation I was like man it's incredible so we um, we love the addiction and the recovery community because those guys need like addicts are people too right they need the hope and the love of Jesus and we have so many people that say hey what can we do how can we help and I'm like well there's two ways you can help two ways here tonight you can help too one, you can just buy a bracelet. Uh, they're $15 each. A portion of the proceeds goes straight back to Teen Challenge. And then two is we have this program called the Give One, Get One program where you can buy a bracelet here tonight and then we give a bracelet to a person in recovery. And the cool thing is you can write up a note here tonight and, uh, and then we take the note and the bracelet and give it to them. And uh, a lot of times you just don't know who you write it to. So people just write, be strong, courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you. You know, or I believe in you, I'm praying for you. And when you're in recovery, and you get a note like that from a complete stranger, it changes your outlook on life sometimes. We have guys that just say, man, thank you. <laughs> and uh, those are the two ways that you can help tonight. It's been awesome to just spread this message of hope, because we believe deeply in the power of hope. We believe in pushing hope deeper and deeper into our communities, our schools, you know, our kids, right? The kids need the love and the hope of Jesus. Amen? Right? So I've got a song called There is Hope and it's dedicated to each and every one of us because whether we like it or not, we're all struggling with some kind of addiction. It could be food, it could be pride, it could be social media. Um, if you're here tonight and you say, I don't have any addictions, check it, right? Check your life. We've all got it. And the beauty is, is that Jesus just says, addictions and all come to me. Uh, the point of
have nights like tonight where we can just stop for a minute in the midst of the hustle and bustle of this crazy season. We can just say, Jesus, we just lay our addictions at the feet of the cross and just give them to you, Father. This is a song called There is Hope. It's dedicated to each and every one of us. Sing. 
Amen. I just finished a uh, an album of hymns. Anybody a fan of hymns? I love hymns. I was born and raised on hymns. My grandmother um, played the organ in our church until she was 94 years old. And uh, it was such an incredible thing to watch her uh, just get up there every Sunday and do her thing. And man, it was awesome. So I figured I'll play a hymn tonight. Is that cool? I don't know if I gave you the lyrics of this or not, but. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Sometimes they're uh, annoying, but we love them anyways. <laughs> I have two. My kids are uh, 17 and 19. And it's amazing to say that because they keep getting older and I keep staying the same age. So. Um, but I remember when my son, Marco, was young, he used to come upstairs and he would jump on our bed like a trampoline kind of thing. And it would be cool and cute if it wasn't like... 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning, right? That's what this kid did. So I remember one morning he was done and he kind of laid down in the middle of me and my wife. And I was looking at him and I was like, you know, what would happen if Marco came upstairs one morning and he said, hey, Daddy, uh, there's no food in the, in the fridge or, uh, hey, there's brown water coming out of the faucet. And, uh, or he said, hey, I scraped my knee, can we go to the doctor? My answer had to be no because there's no doctor near us. And I started getting challenged by that thought and uh, partnered up with um, an organization called Hold to International. And we started sponsoring kids. Anybody sponsor a kid from any organization? Right? It's an incredible, incredible thing to do. Uh, and we started getting these picture folders. This is a little boy uh, from Korea. His name is Gyu Ri. And he is, uh, he just turned one year old. And uh, he's a cute little kid. He's got chubby little cheeks. 
And um, the problem is, you know, I started getting all of these picture folders and looking at them and reading their stories. And all these kids, they wake up every morning and they have trouble finding food and clothing and clean water and health care, kind of the basic necessities of life. So we started sponsoring kids so that I could teach my kids that where they live is Oz, right, compared to the rest of the world. If they need food, they got it. They need water, they got it. They need clothing, they've got it. They need a doctor, they got it. And we slowly started to teach them, hey, where you live really isn't like the rest of the world. There, we certainly are blessed here, but there's other places around the world that just don't have what you have. And they slowly started to get it. They didn't like sacrificing things here and there. And, you know, they're kids, so they don't deal with that. And then I told them a story. I said, hey, I got a buddy that went to Uganda, and he, uh, he went to visit his sponsored kid, right? Seven-year-old little boy, and the, the task for the day was literally just to shadow this kid for the day. See kind of what this kid's day was like. And um, so this kid wakes up at 5 o'clock in the morning and goes, he just grabs what they call a jerry can. Everybody know what a jerry can is? It's like a five-gallon bucket with a lid on it. And he grabs one of these things, he jumps out the front door and starts hoofing it down his path. It's kind of dark. My buddy goes with him as a translator there as well. And they hike for like 45 minutes. And they get to this area. The sun's coming up. It's a beautiful Uganda morning. And there's a, a watering hole, kind of like a clean water well. So this kid grabs his jerry can and just dives right into this crowd. There's like 600 people around this well. And he just starts weaseling his way through underneath arms and over legs and climbing on top of people. He keeps getting pushed aside and pushed aside and pushed aside. And finally, he, uh, he gets so frustrated, he just comes back to my friend where he was. He sits down on his jerry can and just goes, <sighs> and my friend says to the translator, he's like, what's going on? And the translator's like, look, he's just a little kid. He's going to have to wait his turn until he can get to the well. So my friend was like, that doesn't work for me. So he grabbed the jerry can, grabbed the kid's hand, fought through the crowd, filled up the, the, the jerry can, and they walked back to his house. Anybody know how much that thing weighs when it's full of water, five gallons of water? 50 pounds. 49.6 pounds, I think. So they hook 50 pounds of water back to this kid's house. And then he goes on with his day. And he tells me that story and he says, hey man, here's the deal. Go home, stand in your kitchen, and count how many places you can get clean water within 50 feet of your kitchen. So I did. We had 18 different places around my house. Kitchen sink, bathroom upstairs, bathroom downstairs. We have two spigots outside where we water our grass. Anybody water their grass here? Nobody? Two people. Hey, we're in church, we can't lie, right? We have to tell the truth. We water our grass. Why do we water our grass? This is the interactive part of the night. Why? So it looks pretty. Okay, that's one answer. Yeah, it gives it life. It makes it green. So this kid realizes that at seven years old, if he doesn't go and get clean water for his family, his family's not going to have life that day. Pretty harsh reality for a seven-year-old kid. Anybody have trouble getting clean water this morning? No. It's not something we deal with. So we heard this story, we did this test, and what do we do? We sponsor another kids. Now we sponsor five kids in my family. It's incredible. We've had a couple of kids actually time out because they've reached the age of 18, and then we get a new kid. And I remember just a couple of weeks ago, we were sponsoring a little girl and, uh, from Vietnam. And we got a notice saying, hey, Thu from Vietnam is out of the program now. And I was like, wait, what's going on? So I looked at it a little further. And little Thu had gotten adopted. See, the beautiful thing about Holtz International, what they do, and this little boy that I just showed you, this little kid, Gu Ri, he's in their adoption program. And what they do is they facilitate international adoptions all over the world. And last year alone, they got over 600 kids adopted into families that are going to love them and care for them and teach them about the love of Jesus. Absolutely incredible. So when I heard all that, I was like, all right, we're all in. Like, if we're affecting kids' lives that way, giving them food, clothing, clean water, health care, and we're also helping kids on their journey from birth to no parents, no family, to family. Let's do it. And the beautiful thing about the adoption thing is that, you know, we've all been adopted into the family of God. And we were all lost at one point, And now we're in the family of God. So tonight, you know, I believe that Jesus has blessed us so much so that we can be a blessing of others. And he calls us to be his hands and his feet. 
And I can think of no better way to do that than to sponsor a child here tonight. Or if you guys are watching online, you want to sponsor a kid. So this is little you. I'm just going to ask, anybody want to save this kid's life tonight? Anybody want to sponsor him? I'll bring him right out to you. Anybody? It's going to get awkward if I stand here for a while. You do? Okay. Actually, I'm wired in here. Can you? Do you mind? Hey, can we give her a hand? Uh, thank you. This is little Mesfin. He's from Ethiopia. He's a five-year-old boy. Awesome little smile. Anybody want to sponsor him tonight? I know it's weird. I'm going to make you get up. It's all good, but... This literally is the reason why I drive hours and hours for this part of the show. Anybody else want to sponsor a kid? I got uh, five up here tonight. I got a little girl from Vietnam. Her name is Mai. Another little girl from Vietnam. Her name is Lai. And then a little boy from China. His name is Yu. Anybody else want to sponsor a kid tonight? Anybody online get any comments there? They're not even looking. Man, come on, man. Work with me, bro. <laughs> Anyway, here's the deal. If you want to sponsor a kid tonight, I'm going to be right at that table in the back right after the show, and I'd love to walk you through the process. It's super easy. It's $34 a month, and all you have to do is fill out this orange envelope with your mailing info and then your credit card or check or cash tonight for $34, bucks, and you're good to go. And you literally save the kid's life. Some people partner with other people, uh, $17 each over the course of the month, basically just skipping coffee every couple of days. You know, or once a week if you go to Starbucks. <laughs> um, but it's an incredible, incredible thing to do. So if you want to do this tonight, please, please, please come and see me after the show. I'll even give you a free CD. I'm not quite sure which one yet, but I'll let you know when you get back there. Okay? Sound good? Can we hear it? Thank you again. I really appreciate it. You know, I learned, um, I learned a, uh, another Christmas song for this Christmas tour. I've never done this one before. And uh, it's not an easy song to sing, but I've done it three times now on this tour. You guys will be the fourth, okay? So bear with me. I'm still learning it, but it's a great, beautiful, beautiful song. Let all within us 
sponsor a kid tonight, please come and see me at the table right in the back. Um, two, we, um, this has been an interesting year for me. This has been my first year of full-time uh, ministry. <laughs> uh, man, what a year it's been to go full-time with this thing. It's been incredible. We've had over 90 gigs uh, canceled over the last uh, 11 months. It's been incredible. So thank you guys for reaching out to me and answering my emails. <laughs> um, but uh, my family thanks you as well, so appreciate it. Uh, so, here's what I always say to everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. It's incredible. Thank you for spending your Sunday evening with me, uh, of all people. But, hey, if, if you enjoyed tonight and you really do uh, want to help support the ministry that I have and keep me going, um, the best way to do that is to stop at that table on the way out and grab a CD or a T-shirt. Uh, we've got There's Hope T-shirts, There's Hope sweatshirts. We've got zip hoodies now this month. Yeah, there you go. You can model it right there if you want. Um, but we've got all the CDs if you want. We've got a dozen CDs back there. I've got USB drives that have all the music on them. And you guys watching online, if you just go to thedpshop.com, you can grab um, some stuff there as well. But two things I want to point out. We've got a brand new record out called uh, Solo Worship Volume 2. And uh, it's just me and the piano uh, just literally singing worship songs. Uh, Build My Life is on here and What a Beautiful Name and Raise a Hallelujah and all these incredible songs that just kind of help you. The reason we built these CDs is just so we could have something to put on in the background during our devotions and during our prayer time so that we could just hear encouraging words of Jesus behind us as we lift up his name in prayer, right? It's kind of a, a good thing to have. So there's that. It makes a great gift. Uh, and then also, I mentioned this earlier. This is the the book that I wrote to go along with Faith and Gasoline. It's 17 Days of Devotion. It's about a 140-page book. Um, I am super proud of it. I love this thing. We've had amazing uh, feedback. I had one woman say to me, hey, I take your book and I read it to my kid every single night before we go to sleep. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. So we've got books back there too if you want to grab one as well. Uh, and also we have an audiobook. If you're an audiobook person, uh, we've got a USB drive that goes right into your car and you can listen to it. It's about a three and a half hour uh, ride. And it has all the music and the book as well. So Anyway, uh, anything else I need to add here, guys? Or this is it. There's an offering plate in the back if you want to do that. I would tell about the Send a Song. I just think that is so... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, so this year, because we had so many things just cancel on us, I tried to create all these different products. And one that Patty had taken advantage of was this thing called the Send a Song. And uh, basically what it is is you pick a song from my catalog that you love, and then I record an intro saying, hey, this is your Send a Song from whoever bought it, and you can send it to a friend. It's kind of a cool uh, gift idea, a very unique kind of gift, and it helps share the music and the message of what we're trying to get across. So thank you for mentioning that. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, anything else? Any other questions? Anybody else have any comments, questions? <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks for being here. Let me just close this out in prayer. God, we just, uh, Father, we are just humbled and in awe of who you are and how you work in our lives, Father. And God, I just pray that as we roll deeper and deeper into this Christmas season, this Advent season, God, we would just prepare for the arrival of Jesus. 
And the only way that we can do that, Father, is literally on our knees, praying and coming closer and closer to you. So God, I just pray that as we leave here tonight, we would leave here changed because we came in contact with your spirit. And God, we came in contact with you here tonight. So Father, we love you, we thank you, and we just honor you in all of it. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, guys. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your night. Merry Christmas. Finally, I see the darkness crack with the dawn Finally, 